all over the world, areas of outstanding natural beauty, of vital biological significance, have been protected for future generations. On land, we have successfully set aside huge wilderness areas. Approximately 11% of terrestrial Earth has some level of protection. But in the sea, we are lagging far behind. And yet the sea contains as much life, beauty and diversity as the land. And in many cases, far more. In one unique area, a pulse of life emanates from the warmest seas on the planet, a center point of profusion by which all others are measured. In this heart of the ocean, more marine species are found than anywhere else on Earth. This linchpin is called the Coral Triangle, the nursery of the seas. Coral Triangle, the name actually is a biological area considered the most diverse marine area in the world where you have over 600 species of coral reefs, where you have the most number or most diverse number of uh, reef fishes in the world. So basically the Coral Triangle is the center of the biodiversity. As you move farther away from it, the lesser are the number of organisms. The Coral Triangle covers 5.7 million square kilometers across the seas of the Philippines, Indonesia, Malaysia, Timor-Leste, Papua New Guinea and the Solomon Islands. It contains 75% of all coral species known to science, more than 3,000 species of fish, migrating whale sharks and manta rays and many species of turtle, dolphins and whales. The Coral Triangle directly sustains the lives of more than 120 million people in the region and benefits millions more worldwide. Biodiversity is the, uh, acts as the natural capital uh, of the people living here. So the, it generates a lot of uh, livelihood from fisheries, from tourism, and so on. In 2006, the United Nations declared that parts of the Coral Triangle and the Western Central Pacific were the healthiest seas on the planet. Every other having been the subject of massive and in many cases catastrophic overexploitation. Well, it is still the healthiest so far, but uh, we are show they are showing signs of uh, of depletion. <laughs> Not only is it a place of breathtaking natural beauty, but over a third of the world's tuna come from this region. Stocks like Big Eye are beginning to show signs of overfishing, and Yellowfin is at the limit of the amount of fishing that it can take. Skipjack is a success story and needs to remain that way. Skipjack is in a very healthy uh, status. Um, I believe that scientific evidence suggests that it is probably 20% above the maximum sustainable levels right now. So it's pretty healthy. Although in certain areas like uh, Philippines and certain areas in Indonesia, you see signs of local overfishing. One of the most pressing problems is the removal of large predatory fish from coral reefs for the live reef fish trade, often through the use of cyanide. 
These are fish which are associated with coral reefs generally, and they can be kept alive uh, readily in, in tanks, and if they're live, they get a higher price on the market. So this became quite a, a lucrative trade. These fish are sold, uh, they're particularly popular in restaurants where people can, can go and they can select the fish from the tanks. And there's also a lot of trade between Hong Kong and mainland China. There's a, a very large demand in mainland China and a lot of the live fish are exported uh, through Hong Kong. So we see a big growth in this. And most of the live fish yeah, now come from a long way away. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, live fish are from, from mainland China and uh, uh, most of them are from the Southeast Asia. Southeast Asia. We have uh, fish which are coming from the fisheries of communities in many places where fisheries is really important but they either don't have the knowledge or capacity to manage their own particular fisheries and yet they depend on the sea. Many communities use them for food or use them for local sale. When you begin to undermine the very food security of some of these communities where the live fish are sourced. The point about the live trade is that it is a heavy demand on a vulnerable fish which is uncontrolled and likely to grow in the future. As demand for live fish rises and population continues to increase, so will temperatures due to climate change, which will bleach and destroy coral reefs across the region. The future for the Coral Triangle at the moment is uncertain. But already, change is beginning to take place. The Intergovernmental Coral Triangle Initiative has recognized just how significant this natural resource is to the region and the whole world. Marine protected areas are growing in number and size, but need to be dramatically increased. A whole network of protected zones could guard against the pressures of the future, including global warming, but the clock is ticking. Many countries are beginning to create this network. In the Philippines, World Heritage Site Tobataha Reef, in the middle of the Sulu Sea, is one of many relatively new marine protected areas. We are conducting a regular patrol against the illegal fishing, illegal entry, illegal poachers. Seven rangers live on top of the reef for three months at a time. We are very proud to be here, to be able to protect the whole, uh, the entire Tubata Reef. It's not difficult to be here for three months because we have uh, some uh, work here to be done. Once you assign here, you'll not get bored. We are securing one of the national marine parks. I decided long ago never to walk in anyone's shadows. If I fail, if I succeed, at least I leave as I believe. No matter what they take from me, they can take away my dignity. Coral Triangle is one place that we can start to protect before the most serious damage is done. We know from other fisheries that if you start taking out one particular component, whether it's the top trophic level or some other component, you affect the system. And very often you affect the system in negative ways. So the answer is we don't know exactly what will happen, but it, something's going to happen when we change the balance within a system. We don't want the tuna here to follow the cod or the bluefin tuna in the Mediterranean. We are learning the lessons from these two fisheries and we simply don't want that to happen here. There's too much at the stake. That is our culture. If you remove the tuna, we lo lose one of our cultures.
in areas where there is higher species diversity, those areas are more productive. If we compromise ecosystems by removing certain species, then there is evidence that that could compromise the productivity. To manage and conserve properly the tuna stock so that we can have the sustainable harvest for the rest of our life. We will not be seeing the, the end of the line <laughs> much, much farther for, for us. We don't, we don't want to happen that way, that the uh, end of the line already. We, we want it to have more more uh, distance. We want to see the line continue for, for generations to come. And we can do it here. We are in a position to do it here. And with the support of, uh, of the world, with the support of the consumers, I think this is a case where we will win the battle. In some other places around the world, protection has come too late. WWF is working with partners to secure the future of the Coral Triangle, the crucible of marine biodiversity on the planet that supports the livelihoods of millions of people. The heart that pumps lifeblood into all of our seas.